Eric, how are you? Good. Good. And Carol. We'll start as we always do with silent prayer. And then afterward, if you could stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I normally ask you to pray for something, but there's so much that we could pray for. So if you could just take a minute for silent prayer. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and into the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Summer Jimenez? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, our next order of business is a proclamation recognizing Ohio Loves Transit Week 2022. Um, Commissioner Driehaus, would you like to say something before we get started? Sure. And uh, Daryl Haley is here. He's the CEO of SORTA. Daryl, would you come forward um, so that we can sing your praises right here at the, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Um, so I, it's, everybody does love transit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we showed that with the last vote uh, with the levy going in place. And um, this in part was prompted by the signing ceremony that just happened where um, all the 23 jurisdictions that got infrastructure dollars from the levy, 25% of the levy was set aside for infrastructure, 23 communities applied and 23 communities got dollars. Um, so that I'm not sure that's going to happen again, but anyway, it did this time. And so they were very excited about the jump start now that they can have with some of these infrastructure projects in places all over the county. I mean, all these different jurisdictions, they were pretty excited about being there. And it was quite the celebration. Um, and the, Brent, uh, or the Western Hills Viaduct was also, of course, included on that list. So um, it is transit week. And so I thought it might be appropriate to celebrate transit. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have the proclamation in front of us. And Madam President, I'll leave it to you to start. Thank you so much. I'll start with the proclamation. Whereas Ohio's 68 urban and rural public transit agencies, which serve 70 counties across the state, will observe the fourth annual Ohio Loves Transit Week February the 13th through February 19, 2022. And whereas during this week, transit agencies sponsor events and activities to encourage ridership and to educate the public, elected officials, community leaders, and the media about the many contributions that public transportation makes to Ohio's economy and to the quality of life in communities across the state. And whereas transit systems and their courageous employees have continually demonstrated the essential role they play in the communities they serve during the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas Cincinnati Metro and Access paratransit services enhance the quality of life in Hamilton County by providing reliable, affordable, and convenient mobility services and... And whereas 500,000 Ohioans depend on public transit every day, to get to work and medical appointments, shopping centers, parks, libraries, entertainment venues, and countless other destinations. And whereas Ohio's public transit agencies provide more than 93 million rides per year, including more than 14,800,000 rides for seniors 
and people with disabilities, whereas public transportation in Ohio is a $1 billion industry that directly employs 7,480 people and creates tens of thousands of private sector jobs. And whereas nearly 1 billion invested in public transit generates 3.6 billion in economic activity in Ohio each year. And whereas public trans transit's development and deployment of vehicles powered by alternative fuels, including natural gas produced in Ohio, protects the environment, reduces America's reliance on foreign oil, and has enabled the state to become a national leader in green en energy R&D investment and job creation. And whereas the existence of robust public transit service has become a prerequisite for com companies seeking to expand or relocate facilities and or operations. And whereas public transit's continued commitment to provide the mobility services Ohioans want, need and deserve is worthy of recognition now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners does hereby recognize February 13 through February 20 or February 19, 2022, as Ohio Loves Transit Week to celebrate and acknowledge the importance of public transit in our community by order of all three county commissioners. Okay, yeah. I'd just like to say thank you to each one of you um, for your support of transit in our community and all the hard work that it took uh, to get issue seven passed. Um, thank you to the uh, members of Hamilton County, the uh, citizens of Hamilton County. We are really excited about what we are building and we look forward to the transit uh, system of the future. And without your hard work, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I wanna say thank you to each one of you. Thank you. We'll take a picture. <laughs> Our next order of business uh, is public comments. I don't have any cards, but is there anyone on the computer on the Zoom? Yeah, uh, okay. Ms. Davis, you uh, have for the privilege of the floor for two minutes. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, we met with uh, Commissioner Driehaus about a week ago, and it was a very productive conversation. Um, Ms. Driehaus is always um, re very responsive to the residents in the county concerning the solid waste landfill. And um, we had asked to be reckoned that our group, the Solid Waste uh, Caucus, comprised of um, Ditch the Dump, the Sierra Club, League of Women's Voters, Child Advocacy for Rights and Equity, um, and OXPO, be recognized by the Board of Commissioners and being be given authority and powers to address boards, commissions, com and committees um, to convey to them the um, concerns of the public. And then I saw, excuse me, um, I saw that there was a public notice put out in the paper from the Solid Waste Committee. And despite us expressing concerns about being excluded and our issues not being heard, this notice about the Solid Waste update and all the revisions and plans and new programming we want, the, the public notice restricts the public largely to discussing issues that the staff wants to talk about 
instead of the very important issues that the residents want to talk about. And this is just emblematic of a continuing problem with the solid waste um, management staff who will not allow us to effectively participate. So I sent an email to Ms. Marsh this morning asking that the board today um, recognize us as a group and grant us the power to um, specifically address issues um, and put to the agenda and request votes on the issues that our organization, which we represent over 10,000 people now, and we are being locked out by the staff in regards to participating in the update of the solid waste plan. And we need a little help. Thank you, Ms. Davis, for uh, calling in. And I'm sure that Commissioner Driehaus will alert uh, the other commissioners as it relates to bringing something forward or not, but I appreciate your comments. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So we will move forward. No other one on there, uh, Bridget? No one else? Okay. So comments and motions by commissioners. I have a few comments today. Um, and we talk about transportation, but he did leave, but I had a great virtual meeting with uh, Council on Aging, Suzanne Burke, as it relates to transportation and improvement of transportation for those seniors who are in desperate need for transportation. And we're, we are well aware that the two uh, major players in this game, uh, they carry so many people, 6,000 apiece, that it's almost impossible uh, if we even wanted to replace them, but we are getting individual providers to come in and provide services. So she's working very hard, uh, in install a new data system to keep up with whether or not people, the drivers are arriving on time, how the one, the clients that are receiving the service, how they feel about the service. And I'm just really excited about the new things that are going, going to come forth for the senior citizen population or those that are disabled. Um, I want to bring up the Cincinnati Bengals. Who they? I didn't, yeah, <laughs> I love people. But um, I want, uh, Bridget is gonna show you one thing. We of course declared the Bengals uh, a Super Bowl day, their, their day. And that's a picture of, we did raise a flag in honor of them and we did not show it. So I just wanted to share that the county did raise a flag in their honor. Uh, we were still so very proud of them. Uh, we're proud of the owners. Thank you, Bridget the coaches, the players for shining a light on this region and the belief that they can do um, as long as they work hard. And that's for everybody. And they did not lose their determination. And we are just so proud of them as a county. And I went to the rally yesterday um, at Washington Park and it was awesome. The, the coach was there, Mike Brown was there, the governor was there. And it was just a great time. I'm looking, looking forward to the future of the Bengals. Um, I will move on to a couple other comments I have. As we know, this is Black History Month. And um, I have on red, black, and green. And the reason for that, people have often asked the African-American flag and the meaning of that. And the red stands for when you see the flag flying, so you'll, have, you'll be educated on this. The red is the blood that unites all people of black African ancestry that they shed for liberation. The black is for the people whose existence as a nation, though not a nation state is affirmed by the existence of the flag. And the green is the abundant and vibrant natural wealth of Africa, the motherland. So when people ask you, uh, you can tell them that you have an idea or understanding of what, those, what the flag means. And just in general, since Black history, it is this month, I've said before last week, Black history is American history. Take time to know people of a different race or a different ethnicity. We know that racism still does exist. A lot of it is because of fear, false evidence appearing real. I believe that knowledge is power. The more that you know about someone, the more that you want to know. We can't live our lives with blinders on. 
According to the 2020 census, the white population has declined 8.6% since 2010. Multiracial population has increased 276%. The Black African American population accounted for 12.4% living in the United States, which is 46.9 million. So our numbers are increasing. Um, you know, I remember, I won't, I won't state the date because I didn't bring that with me, but there will be more brown and black people in the United States. Uh, and so we have to just get to know each other, get to know people for who they are, not by the color of their skin. Lastly, as it relates to black history, just a few things that you can tell your friends about. There are so many black inventors, and I said this last week that I would talk about just a few of them, and then next week I'll talk about a few more. It's really difficult to imagine a world without the many inventions that are done by black people. And just a few, the folding cabinet bed, you know, when you see on I Love Lucy that bed in the wall and it comes down and all that. In 1885, Sarah Good became the first black woman to receive a U.S. patent. She moved to Chicago and opened a furniture store. It was there she came up with an industry changing idea that brought more urban residents with limited space into her store. Potato chips, George Crumb in 1853 in Sarasota, New York. He was actually a chef in a restaurant. People were complaining about how thick the potatoes were. Uh, so he tried to make the potatoes as thinly as possible fried them until they were burnt crisp, and threw a gener generous handful of salt on top. Thus, the chip was born. Just a couple more. The gas mask. Garrett Morgan developed what he called the safety hood after noticing how many firefighters were being killed by smoke on the job. The hood, which went over his head, featured tubes connected to wet sponges that filtered out smoke and provided fresh oxygen. And lastly, for this week, protective mailbox. Philip B. Downing created a mailbox design that featured an outer door and an inner safety door to provide to av avoid parcels being stolen. This safety device allowed mailboxes to be set up everywhere in the United States. I'm gonna do one more. Um, Charles Richard Drew. He became interested in research and the preservation of blood when he was studying at Columbia University, Drew discovered a method of separating red blood cells from plasma and then storing the two components separately. This new process allowed blood to be stored for more than a week, which was a maximum at that time. Drew documented these findings in a paper that led to the first blood bank. So those are just a few and you're welcome to get on the internet and read up more and I'll give you some more next week. So. Um, that will end my uh, comments for today. I did want to mention that I was at the free store food bank and helped um, pack up some boxes last Friday uh, for people right before the Super Bowl. And it was uh, just felt really good. Kroger's was there and they gave out a $33,000 check to the food bank. Um, and so I thank them for inviting me. Okay, Vice President Reese. Thank you. Um, and thank you for... Um, the presentation. Uh, some of the things uh, that I was going to mention, you have mentioned that uh, I had a chance to be at as well. Um, I think all three of us at um, the Free Store Food Bank in World Hunger uh, Initiative. Um, and I think they had one, Kroger's was in Cincinnati, and they also had one in LA. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think we did more boxes. <laughs> We beat LA on that one, but um, it was great to uh, be there with my two colleagues as well. And uh, yesterday, certainly the um, AFC championship uh, celebration yesterday at Washington Park. I was happy to uh, also uh, be a part of that and uh, be a part of the Who Day Nation that was in full uh, swing. Uh, Want to also uh, acknowledge uh, the Who Day Nation that has been all over and uh, has been uh, traveling as well as being here. They were meeting the team when they came home uh, back from, from LA and it was cold, very, very cold. 
But when they got back, they had a lot of the Who Day Nation out there welcoming them back home. I want to just congratulate the, the team on, a, I think, a very good year. I think, uh, obviously, we fell short of our goal uh, to win the Super Bowl. But I think Dwayne Johnson said it best at the Super Bowl when he introduced both teams. When he introduced us, he said the Cincinnati Bengals, who have risen from the ashes. Um, most people, you know, that's, you know, uh, my father has a saying, his whole saying is he came from the bottom up. But to, to rise from the ashes, uh, which is the story of so many of our citizens, our small businesses, um, at a time when it's just been tough for us, a very tough two years. And to rise when everyone said you couldn't make it and get all the way to the Super Bowl is something uh, to definitely be commended to the team and what they uh, what they did and not not stop believing in themselves when people said you just can't do it. They kept believing they could. So I want to thank them for that. Bringing them. Our county was brought together everywhere we went. And I hope that we keep that spirit. Uh, the colors were black and orange. Uh, it wasn't about. Uh, your political party and all of those things. It was about, we on the same team and uh, it's our team against their team. And I just hope that we keep that everywhere I went, I heard people saying, who day we're greeting people that we don't even know was a common language called who day. Um, we are hugging and high-fiving and smiling again for we haven't had a lot of things to smile for in a long time. So I hope we keep that energy uh, as we move forward um, as a county. Uh, we are one Hamilton County, and I think we showed that. Uh, people who didn't even know anything about football were screaming, who that? It was about our team. Um, and it didn't matter if you were in the, the suburban part or if you were in the inner city part. It didn't matter if you were uh, in Cincinnati or if you're in a village or a township. We were all together. Uh, and to me, I think that's what I love the most about it. So I just want to uh, echo that again and to say we still are screaming, who day? In addition, um, Black History Month, and uh, I do want to thank uh, President Dumas. Uh, before I got here, when she came down, she instituted a program to honor African Americans. So, when I was at the city, we always did it at the city, but the county had never done anything like this. And it gave us a chance to honor each year African-Americans that are right from here. Uh, you don't have to go in a history book. You can touch these folks and the, the work that they were able to do and the changes that they have done and continue to make. Um, and then this year, I got a chance. I think this week, their days were Fannie Mallory Day was this week. And Carl Westmoreland Day was this week. Um, and certainly we have others, but I want to say how important that is because we need to make sure that people can see some of these history makers. They're right in front of us. And a lot of times we don't acknowledge them because they're here and we just say, oh, well, they just do what they do. But they have made an impact along with so many others of our ancestors who came before us. Um, I want to... Um, acknowledge uh, from, from my perspective, um, I went to Grambling State University where I graduated from. And uh, a lot of people, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, they went to LSU down in Louisiana. Um, and so I kind of relate to them in terms of, you know, what they like to eat, that crawfish and the gumbo and the jambalaya. And I think they bring a lot of that to the field. But Grambling State University, I wouldn't be here today with a degree from Grambling State if it wasn't for starting with Booker T. Washington that started Tuskegee Institute. Uh, there were black farmers in Louisiana that owned land and said education is important, but they didn't know how to do a school. So they summons Booker T. Washington. And Booker T. Washington said, I'm busy here at Tuskegee in Alabama, but I got my number two guy I've trained. His name is Charles P. Adams. I will send him down to Louisiana. Charles P. Adams went down to Louisiana with the land that was owned by the black farmers. And he put together the curriculum and started Grambling College, which is now known as Grambling State University. Many, many decades later, I got a chance to graduate from Grambling State University and 
play on the basketball team and be a SWAC championship player. I got a chance to serve as Miss Bramlin State University, but there are thousands who have graduated from that university. These are the types of stories and an impact that black history is being made. Now, when I was at Grambling, black history was every day because the dormitories are named after people like PBS Pinchback, the first black governor of Louisiana. I didn't learn it in a book. I learned it because I knew it was a dormitory. And so these are the type of things that are uh, important, the inventors and those kind of things so that other people that look like me and look like uh, President Dumas can feel as though, wait a minute, we can do something big. We can contribute. We come from people who have contributed. And what makes it history is not what they have done, but the odds and the obstacles that they had to overcome to actually do it. Charles drew what he did with blood transfusion, but then he himself needed a blood transfusion and was unable to because of the color of his own skin. These are the type of stories that exist and should be, to should be told and should be understood so that the next generations can go even further than we have gone. So I'm excited about always celebrating Black history this month and every other month of the year as it is, has always been in my household. Also, I wanted to say um, for this month, I, I wanna thank the School of Creative and Performing Arts, Ms. Calloway, for inviting me to be a part of her uh, Black History program at Creative Performing Arts and got a chance to talk to the students there. Uh, that was great this week. I will be speaking to uh, eighth and 12th graders this, uh, this Saturday with Jack and Jill organization at the University of Cincinnati. I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully I can pass something along that will help these young ladies in their lives as they move forward. Um, I wanna also say that um, uh, I did get a chance to uh, meet with our administrator and looking forward to it, uh, to have uh, a presentation being made, hopefully uh, from Ms. Lisa Webb on the $1 million that we put in the budget and was passed for senior citizens to be able to get help with their furnaces, their heating and cooling, but also help with um, their utilities. We'll have a senior uh, initiative uh, because they are not able, they were not eligible for some of the other programs we have. And some of those other programs, they almost, you almost gotta be destitute to get some help. This will go into the gap and be allowing uh, these seniors to be able to get this type of help that they need. In addition, there will also be a program for um, African-American and other minority seniors to make sure that they understand what these programs are and how to better connect them. So I'm looking forward to um, Ms. Lisa Webb presenting that to us. I think we uh, all received uh, uh, the proposal uh, so that we can get moving on that and be able to help uh, these seniors. And I'm very excited about having that added. Also wanted to say um, congratulations to Chief since I police chief Elliot Isaac, he'll be retiring tomorrow. Uh, here's someone else who came from our community, came from the bottom, moved all the way up uh, and has been our police chief. He's retiring tomorrow and we will have uh, Lieutenant Teresa, uh, is it Thiget? I always get Thiget. I'm always getting her name, last name wrong, Thiget. Uh, I've, been, I've had a chance to interact with her uh, she will make history tomorrow. It's the first female to lead the city of Cincinnati Police Department. And of course, at the Sheriff's Department, we have our first female sheriff. So uh, some, new, some new folks in town. Uh, we're excited about that. So congratulations to, to both of them. And then lastly, the Cincinnati Music Festival is back. It will be back. They announced their lineup is returning and certainly I know a lot of people are excited about that. Uh, it brings in over $100 million of economic impact, so we definitely are excited about it as well. Uh, Janet Jackson and Charlie Wilson will be leading uh, it, so it will be a Rhythm Nation coming all the way to the Who Day Nation, and it will happen at Paul Brown Stadium. You know I'm always out trying to sell. I got to sell to the county. We try to sell it. Come on, get your rooms. And we're looking forward to connecting it uh, with our Cincinnati 
Black Music Walk of Fame. So we're excited about that, uh, Madam President. I just wanted to put that out. They announced it yesterday, and I know we've been uh, doing a lot with the Bengals, and some people might have missed that announcement, uh, but tickets are flying off the shelves, I hear, uh, and hotel rooms are ready to get booked. So um, again, they can go online and get that information. The Cincinnati Music Festival, the oldest African-American music festival in the nation is back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're excited about it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Greenhouse. Madam President, um, I have a couple of comments, the first of which is to an introduction. Uh, Chris Harding has joined my office as the public affairs director. He's in the audience. Welcome, Chris. Um, I did walk him around. So those of you that were in your offices got to meet him. Um, and those of you that weren't in your offices will get to meet him. So he's a, a great asset to the office. I'm thrilled to have him. He came over from the courthouse and is really looking forward to working with all of us to move the county forward and the work of the county forward. So thanks, Chris, for being here and thanks for coming over. Um, I was gonna mention, we've, we've spent a lot of time together uh, in the last few days. So we all did uh, Zero Hunger, Zero Waste at the Free Store Food Bank. Um, Kroger generously offered the check for $33,000 and it was just a great experience, a hands-on experience for all three of us to um, help people in need of, of food with food insecurity. So we're really excited about doing that. And also it was part of the pep rally. Um, yesterday, I, I think probably the last hurrah for all of the Who Day celebrations, um, but it, it was really exciting to be in such a, a crowd that was so fired up about the Bengals. Um, and I don't know about the rest of you, but I got one comment that, you know, what are we doing throwing a celebration for a team that lost? That is not how I don't think any of us feel about the Bengals at the moment. Um, we are thrilled that they brought so much energy and excitement to this community and went to the Super Bowl. I mean, no small achievement. So um, I say no to the naysayers uh, and say, it. you know, we, we were well within our uh, purview to celebrate the Bengals and um, the, the owners and the coaches and everybody else that was there. It was, it was really exciting. Um, lastly, I went to an event, represented the um, commission down at the annual memorial walk for William Henry Harrison down in North Bend, Ohio. Um, William Henry Harrison was the ninth president of the United States. He is buried in North Bend, Ohio. And so they do this memorial walk up to the tomb and there is a wreath laying ceremony where people are in period dress and they um, celebrate the life and times of William Henry, Henry Harrison. And I've, I've been doing this since I was a state rep when I used to represent that area. Uh, and so I went down and it was a lovely celebration. And I just wanna thank the organizers, Bev in particular, uh, for year after year in the freezing cold, um, getting enough people to walk that route. There were school kids there. There was a band playing. It was really fun. Um, so thank you to them for the constant reminder um, that we are home to presidents and we should celebrate that. Thank you. Thank you. We have our administrator, Jeff Aluto. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, no comments today. I may have some comments as we get into our uh, hearing on sidewalks. Um, but there is just one uh, by leave item today in your packet that is by leave item number one. I'll defer to Commissioner Driehouse if you would like mm -hmm. to uh, sure. Certainly. enter it. Well, thank you. Um, this is a resolution appointing Chris Harding to the Office of the Board of County Commissioners. And so I will move approval of the resolution. So moved. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Rees? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you. And you thank you, Madam. Can say a few. Oh, you want to talk, Chris? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> right here, yeah. Thank you all. I look forward to uh, working with all of your offices as we go forward. I know I've gotten the chance to meet many of you uh, in the past couple of years and I uh, look forward to uh, our continued engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. And Madam Welcome. President, no further by leaves. Okay, thank you so much. We will move forward to our public hearing. Mr. Eric Beck is here. A hearing to consider the 2021-2022 sidewalk repair replacement program project number hashtag 502201. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Madam President. Uh, this is the second of, of two hearings to allow the public to express any concerns with the sidewalk replacement program. Uh, the property owners we've been in contact with uh, numerous times over the past year as we've been putting this program together. 
Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's anybody here to make any comments and mm -hmm. that's the purpose of the hearing. Sure, we'll make sure no one's on the Zoom mm -hmm. for the sidewalk repair replacement. Okay, thank you. Okay, should there be not, since there's no, uh, um, no comments, I would recommend that the, uh, the board would close the hearing for public comments. Um, I know we, uh, Commissioner Reese has uh, expressed some concerns about how we might make some other funding options available to cover this. Mm -hmm. Closing the hearing, we will not proceed with any bringing a resolution forward to proceed with the sidewalk until we resolve those questions. We've been working with administration on those. So my recommendation is to close the hearing and then we will continue working towards that goal and bring something to a staff meeting at a later date. Um, we've been working with Jeff. I don't know if Jeff wants to add anything on that. Uh, thank you, Engineer Beck. No, I think you hit it perfectly. I think closing the hearing today does not prevent us from continuing to work this uh, particular program alternative. We'll come back to the board in a couple of weeks, probably in a staff meeting uh, with some thoughts on uh, programmatic ideas for uh, programs to help uh, residences finance uh, sidewalks determine at that point in time whether the board would like to move forward with something. Um, regardless of what that answer is, yes or no, uh, we could then subsequently bring forward a resolution uh, advancing the 2021-2022 sidewalk program, either in concert with or without whatever at the discretion of the board, uh, a separate program to subsidize that, uh, that work. Thank you. And th there were numerous uh, entities that had this program at one time. I know they have stop um, like I know Forest Park had it, they don't have it anymore. So I think it's great to look at programmatic options during a staff meeting and maybe even incentives for those who have it to maybe be helpful to them. Any other discussion before I close the hearing? Uh, yes, I just wanna thank you um, um, for looking into that and look forward to it. I think it would be great to have it um, all together. That way we kind of have all of the facts and we can then look at what's the best decision having it together. But I do appreciate uh, you, Mr. Beck and uh, Administrator Aluto for uh, being able to look into those items and bring it back forward to the commission. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dream. Yes. Thank you so much. And then we have our engineers here for our regular agenda item. We have one item. Thank you. Um, and I would like to follow up on your Black History Month. You're mm -hmm. one of your gentlemen that you mentioned, Mr. Garrett Morgan, mm -hmm. who invented the gas mask. Uh, he also invented the three position traffic signal that we still use yeah. today, the red, yellow, green. Oh, so I, I was familiar with his name and, and his accomplishments. Mm -hmm. so. Great. That's Thank great. you. Thank you. Um, we have a, the resolu resolution in front of you is a joint agreement between Hamilton County and the Board of Trustees of Miami Township for construction and maintenance of improvements to the Cliff Road Slips located in Miami Township, uh, project number 502105. Uh, construction cost is $261,629. This allows us to partner with Miami Township who has uh, obtained in conjunction with our office, OPWC funds in the amount of $237,771 or 48% of the project. This will allow us to move forward with getting the construction plans ready and letting a project to correct the landslides on Cliff Road. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love when we can leverage our money and other people's money also at the same time. Any uh, other discussion? Yep. Hearing none, uh, I make a motion to adopt resolution number one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank commissioners. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before you consent agenda items number two through 15, uh, some of the items within the consent agenda uh, under administration is approval of some purchase orders, uh, replacement vehicle for the sheriff, and one budget adjustment. Under environmental, we have an innovation grant that went to a church, Church on Fire Ministries. And HCDC has an enterprise agreement that's included in the consent agenda. JFS has several items uh, for youth, uh, two boys' homes uh, that need to be funded, two group home services, and two foster care services. 
Um, any comments on the consent agenda items? Uh, Vice President Reese. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. Item number uh, five, the budget adjustment. Mm -hmm. I just had one um, question on the budget adjustment. It talks about a additional property tax and parking operations. Um, maybe mm -hmm. can the administrator talk about that? Uh, so this is a uh, budget adjustment allocating uh, additional dollars for, for property taxes. We do have certain parcels that we continue to pay property tax on um, that sometimes we get exemptions for, for parking. Those exemptions roll, roll off typically if it's a surface lot. Uh, so in this particular case, John, I don't know if, if you know exactly the parcel that it is. It's always a little bit of a guess <laughs> as to how much our property taxes are going to be. We're like everybody else in the county. We don't know how much we're charging. Mm -hmm. um, but the I believe this is related to the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the new um, West End, the West Side uh, garage coming online. So, so property tax is being paid for the, for, uh, and there will will likely apply for and, and achieve typically a, an exemption for structured parking. Um, but if there is a period of time when we own the property, uh, when it does not uh, apply for or does not allow for an exemption, we are still liable for the property taxes for that. So if it's that so parcel. we owed more than we thought we were going to owe, ultimately the exemption will come through and we'll have a rebate coming rebate. in the years ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for that explanation. I just, you know, people see this, they say, mm -hmm. you know, we pay property taxes too. And a lot of times, uh, you know, even when we were looking at this um, uh, impervious surface fee and all of that, I've been asking, would that be, a, will we have to be paying for those? We got lots ourselves. So this is another example of just keeping our eye on. Mm -hmm. These are things that we would have to pay. And ultimately it's the taxpayers that, that pay those things. So thank you for that explanation. Thank you. Um, no further discussion. I make a motion to approve items two through 15. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehouse. Yes. Thank you. And I would like to, uh, to thank Vicki and Caroline, who's mm -hmm. back there doing the sign signing for us today. So. At this point, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehouse. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh.